So this was an original barn you yeah, were Yeah, this, to where the low roof is here, this was the original barn. That there used to be a self-feed silage pit, and then this was kennels originally. Uh, so over time it's been converted through from cubicles to a robot area, from a silage pit to cubicles. Um, so yeah, there's, as I say, there's 157 cubicles in this first building with the three robots. Your automatic scrapers, again, it's a kind of a love-hate relationship in the UK with them. Some people yeah, don't touch them, others yeah. do. We have uh, three lanes of hydraulic scrapers. Um, they're okay. We have issues with them. But we also have a slurry collector in the new building. And that's okay as well. Okay. So it's, it's yeah. yeah. Um, I think Jack would probably have gone for auto scrapers in the new shed if we'd had our time again. In hindsight, yeah, I would have bought auto scrapers. Yeah, he'd have bought auto. The, the collector can be frustrating. Okay, it's yeah. not perfect either. No, Nothing no. Yeah. But it's the same story with anything. It's like the robots, you've got to maintain them. You've yeah. got to manage them. Yeah. If you don't maintain the collector, it'll, it, it can let you down. Yeah. But it's just that you've got to be there. Whereas these are pretty bomb proof, but they're also now getting to the stage where we're getting quite a lot of wear in them as well. They've been in sort of 15 years. I see. So what type of mats? Uh, these are all David Beach. Mm. David's put all the mattresses in for us. We, we originally used to have EVA mats um, and we decided that we would go for a mattress. So these are a gel mattress. Uh, Dave put these in for us about three years ago. Uh, we updated, yeah, yeah. updated them all, didn't we? So they're all the same now across the whole, the whole farm. Whereas we had two or three different types of mat before. Okay. Uh, so no, David's, he's, yeah, they've put those in for us. Yeah, fans as well? Yeah, just four box fans in the shed. Mm. Two here, one there, one there. Nothing in the new shed, because uh, it's quite a, high quite a higher pitch on that one. So it gets quite good airflow through it. Is there any necessity are they? You're indoors full time? Uh, yeah. They're set at sort of 15 degrees, so when the when the sensor gets down to 15 degrees in the building, they'll kick in automatically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're just single speed. I know there's some of the fans that are out there, they're regulated for speed control, but these have been in for about six years now, and it does make a difference. It makes a big difference when the weather's, when it's warm. Okay. Yeah. And an automatic curtain on the side as well. Yes. We put that in two years ago. That's The side of the building was Yorkshire boarding with gaps in it, um, but we felt that when it was warm, you were seeing cows standing where the gaps were. So we took the Yorkshire boarding off, put the screen on, and we do get a lot more consistency in lying. And okay. yeah. When you say it's automatic, what's it doing or what decisions is it making? Uh, rain and wind, basically. It's not on temperature, yeah. it's rain and wind. Okay. So, and it's wind direction as well. So if the wind's coming from the south, that'll be down. If the wind starts coming from the north or the west, mm. it'll up and down to, to but it depends on wind speed really yes. and obviously moisture. If there's moisture in the air, it'll it'll start going up. I see. So you have a slurry channel then I see as well? Yeah, we have a, a system that's basically been added onto. We have one reception pit under the yard that holds about 20,000 gallon. Mm. Channel that comes up the shed and then all the way across right to the far side of the new shed. Um, grids all the way through. Yeah. yeah, one 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 channel all the way into the reception pit, and so then it's pumped into the tower twice a week. Okay, so no sand, so it's moving easier. No, it's all yeah. sawdust. Yeah, it's all sawdust. Okay, you like sawdust? Yeah, mm. yeah. I think from a handling point of view, it's better. We were on a we tried well, we were on bags of powder bed. Yeah, we moved to bulk powder bed. Then we tried paper, uh, but we've settled on sawdust. Yeah, the paper settled in the channels, so we've we've yeah. gone off that. So we, we were on a, a, a sander dust, which was extractions basically, but we were fine and it wasn't helping health, health point of view. Yeah, it was really there was dust everywhere. So we're onto a slightly more, well, it's a sawdust now. Hmm. Um, we probably use a little bit more, but it's not costing us as much. Right. Um, so cubicles are lined three times a week and then bedded every day, once okay. a day. Once a day, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. So feeding wise, Jack, what are you feeding? So on about 60% maize, 40% grass. 
Uh, then we've got our blend, some stuff in bags, limestone flour, toxisorb. Uh, yeah. So is all the blend going through the robot? Or you uh, so the robots have got their own nut. Yeah. Uh, feeds into them through the org and then we've, it's a different blend that we put in the wagon to feed okay. these. <laughs> okay, so what's in it that's different? Uh, the blend is a higher starch. Yeah. Some slightly more fibrous robot nut. Um, but it's the overall ration, the base ration for the, for the highs is sort of 17% protein. So. And we're putting, the barrier ration is maintenance plus 25, 26 litres at the moment and that's across the two sheds the two sheds have the same ration when we first put the fourth robot in we were going to use that as a a low yielder shed so a late lactation cow shed so we we fed two different rations but we found that we were we were making cows low yielders they were dropping off the milk too much so we've basically now feed the same in both sheds and that's why we're getting 39 litres, whereas before we were sort of 35, 36. Okay. Uh, we, 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 we were effectively drying cows off too quick over there, so we weren't feeding them enough. Okay, so, so the robot tops up? Yeah, to feed. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. It's, it works well, the, robo the robot, yeah, the robot nut. We're feeding, feed rate's about 0.33 kilos across, that's across the ration per litre. So. Okay. Do you have another head feed here then? No, these were, these were, they were old yeah. troughs. Yeah. Uh, we're basically all barrier fed now. Okay. So we, we just felt that the wagon, we didn't have to come in the shed to feed the cows basically. So we can run down the barrier. Yeah, so. Yeah, because we had those troughs before we had the feed barrier on the other side. On there. the other side, yeah. So okay. we basically how we used to feed was in the troughs and this first barrier. Mm. Uh, and then we put this, this roof over the feed area, created the other barrier so we can feed down both sides now. I see, so how often are you feeding? Once a day? Once a day in this yeah. shed, and yeah. then new shed, that gets fed every other day. Right. So your feed face then, I see you've, uh, you've just, you've a surface there to? Yeah, yeah, we put the plastic down two or three years ago. Um, it was quite rough, the concrete was there, so we decided to put something down. Mm. It was cheap and cheerful, but it works. And then when we did this barrier, we put that down straight away before we started feeding down there. Okay. And the same on the, on the new shed as well, that's, okay. that's the same. So do you find it, in, it improves intakes or...? I think it does, yeah. 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 We don't get much waste, do we? No. We clean out probably twice a week and we only get, you know, a little pile off all the barriers. Yeah. Maybe a wheelbarrow full off all of them. Mm. So when was this built? This... Uh, so here was constructed in 2014 for the original three robots and then we uh, got a catchment sensitive farming grant to cover this feed area, the dung store and the dry cow feed area. So we put three new roofs up there. Uh, so that was 2020. Yeah, yeah. And then this shed went up in 2021 for the fourth robot. Um, and then we started milking in May 2022 with the right. fourth robot. Yeah. So height wise diff you know, there's a quite a difference then, David. Yeah, Andrew. this is this is sixteen, that's twelve. The twelve foot to the eaves there. These are sixteen and then all the others are sixteen. There's definitely a feel of good ventilation in here, notice the roof in the yeah. existing. We, we couldn't do anything about that, you know, the existing were what they were and they worked well at the time, but putting this up you would worry about it having an issue of stopping the ventilation through there yeah. and probably the thinking and going for the curtains has helped by putting these on is, is slowing the, the air flow through that building yeah okay so there's, there's definitely a, a good feel of ventilation in here yeah um, yeah feels like an area you just step out into it so yeah a big passage at Sandra is, it, is that a little bit too big to think uh, not really no no it yeah, seems to work it works yeah. fine it was it was what we did yeah. at the time yeah. so um if anything this the feed passage here is 30 foot wide where the troughs are that would be better if it was 20 foot wide it does get a little bit dry on the far side and you do get the odd cow slipping on there if it was a little bit narrower yeah. it would probably keep it wetter 
definitely better. That you possibly considered putting another row of cubicles in the back of that once you thought about doing this? Have we have said about doing that. Yeah, we have. Potential ha there. The robots couldn't stand no, it. No, no. So mm. it's a bit of a wasted exercise. Yeah. It, it is something we did look at. We that was an option whether we go for another robot or whether we put, try and put more cows on those robots. But it wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked. You know, 100, 150, 55 cows on three robots, high yielding cows is. All, the robots are all doing sort of 2,000, 2,100 kilos of milk a day and we couldn't physically get much more in the tank yeah. at the moment. Mm. So It's that, a balancing act. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So cubicle wise then, what did you go for over? Uh, they're all second hand cubicles in there. They were the IAE Ultima cubicle with the David Beach mattress. Um, we managed to pick the cubicles up from a, a farm dispersal sale took them out and then refitted them back here um, so there's 62 65 cubicles in there uh, so as I say we're between 60 and 65 cows on that robot at any one time yeah um, yeah double row feed passage on the outside of the shed and again you have a nice weight here as well yeah do you like yeah okay just yeah. cows to loaf around or just relax around loaf yeah, yeah there's an outside yard we'll see around there later under yeah. in front of the dung store mm. we've always we've always tried to make sure that there's plenty of room for the cows to have a wander mm. uh, and then the same here they've got a loaf in there at the top end quite wide passageways so yes. you know some people would probably say that we could have put more cows in that shed or fitted more cubicles but one robot 65 cows okay. it's, I'd rather have plenty of space and be understocked than try and pack them in too tight okay. that's the thing we've, I've, I've learned with robots you can't overstock them you just can't overstock them once you get above that sweet spot you start encountering issues whether it be fetching more cows or yield drop or you know as, yeah. as the old saying goes Less is more, and yeah. it's very true with robots. Yeah, and you put your nose, spite your face, small bit on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So scraping wise, then say where you have scraping to do. You have a small. Yeah, we've got a little pivot steer. Yeah. Um, so basically, this area is scraped here with the pivot steer. The feed area is scraped twice a day with the pivot steer, and then the dry cows are scraped with the pivot steer yeah. once a day. Mm. Yeah. It's so. A handy machine on the farm. Yeah, this is the second one. It's a, a Chinese import. We had uh, one three years ago. Uh, without a cab, yeah. clocked about 1,200 hours up on it, didn't we, in yeah. three years. Um, and then the, the same deal has got these coming in now. So we've had one of these with a cab, which is now much better for bedding down, a lot less dust. Okay. So that's, that was probably the main driver for going down that route. Yeah. Um, so we've only had it a month, but it's so far so good. Seems good. all right. Yeah. 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 We're just saying, Bertie, when we... When we did the original robot building, we did see an increase in lameness over the first 12 months because there was a lot of new concrete. Uh, and we did it all with the roller finish, so it wasn't an aggressive finish, but yeah. it was just a little grippy finish. But we saw quite a bit of white line um, that first 12 months. Then that settled now, that's been fine. And then exactly the same with this. For the first 12 months, we saw quite a bit of wear on the soles. Um, but we've, we seem to have got through that now. And okay. Foot, foot issues are a lot less than they ever were. Okay, so. so there's kind of no avoiding that, is there, with new concrete, you think? I, it seems to be quite a general thing. You talk to people if you do a new build. It's, yeah. I have, I have seen now that people are using, um, with the float, they've got basically uh, stainless steel lugs on it to, to create grooves in the concrete. Now, that might end up being better because your float will give you a little bit of a smoother finish. Yeah, it gives a similar effect to the Diamond chasers, yeah. Put the diamond mm. floor finishing, so yeah. That. So that'll be for the next project, but I don't know when that'll be. Yes. So I suppose service track wise, there, Andrew. You yeah, know, we, we railway sleepers. Yeah, we. Yeah. Um, Something common in Cheshire. I've seen yeah, a lot of railway them. sleepers come out of crew. Yeah. So these were done. This was done when we um, when we did the the first build. That goes round, and then it stopped sort of there, and then we've extended it on in this year we'll have a walk around the track so we've basically got a track now that you don't have to interfere with the cows for harvesting or movements of, of vehicles everything okay. can go round all the way around the back of the farm yeah which is good because yeah, so, yeah. originally we'd have to shut the dry cows in when we were silaging 
Whereas now we don't need to because we can come yeah. all the way around the farm. Okay, great flexibility, so. Yeah. So water-wise, uh, what's your? Have you got your own supply of water? Yeah, we've got uh, three big rainwater harvesting tanks. There's two on the main shed, and this one on here. So that's all for external washdown on the robots. We don't use that water in the robot rooms as such. And then we have our own borehole, um, which went in in 2018, which produces. When we first put it in, I think it was 700 liters an hour. So we were sort of half and half borehole water mains but our mains pressure is very poor we're sort of 11 12 liters a minute which is wouldn't be enough to sustain the number of cows we've got but over time the boreholes improved and i think we're now at about 1500 liters an hour okay so i would think all the drinking water for the cattle um and then we have a complete cleaning system so all the external water is effectively borehole water so it works, works yeah. very well. Okay. Is that got a UV treatment? Yeah, yeah, we'll have a look at that when we go around. Mag iron, filters, UV, yeah. We manually foot bath now. Uh, we foot bath with formalin four times a week. Both sheds have got manual foot baths in. Uh, we, we, we did have an auto foot bath between robots one and two, but we felt that uh, between robots two and three but we felt that the cows in robot one weren't going through enough and then we looked at auto foot baths for the new robot but we just felt that it would be easy we've got a walk over there that we can basically put the cows in the feed area when we feed open the walk over and then they'll go through on the stats going through the robots you do find that you've got cows that preference robot one two and yeah three. yeah we've got um this here is a left-handed robot robot three in the main shed is a left-handed robot and then we have one and two are right-handed robots. So, yeah, they, they, we do have cows that prefer one or the other. Sometimes when we move cows across into this shed, if they've only been used to one and two, we have to just bring them a couple of times a day for a few days just to get them to go through. Yeah. Well, they are the herky creatures, and I like to cubicle lane, they will try and pick a preference yeah. for certain cubicles. Yeah, that's, um, that's, yeah, no, very true. If they want to lay in that, so, yeah, I would imagine the cubicle yeah. robots.